What is good all you Dolphins faithful out there? In today's video, I'm going to be going over some tour news in relation to Coach Flores' interview with Mike Tirico on NBC and also some news on how the Dolphins view Austin Jackson and Robert Hunt moving forward. Uh, so starting here with tour, when the former Alabama quarterback held his virtual pro day in Nashville earlier this month, some did wonder you know, what exactly he was achieving by getting the tape out to all 32 NFL teams. And obviously, you know, he was trying to show how healthy he was at the time. And honestly, he made some great progress. And as it turned out, it was one of the many reasons why the Dolphins felt comfortable drafting Tua six months after his major hip surgery in November, fifth overall in the uh, previous draft, 2020 draft. Asked Monday by NBC Sports, Mike Tirico, why the importance of that video was part of the Dolphins' decision to take Tua. And Coach Flores said it was important. Uh, it came out and Chris Greer sent it to me and we were just watching it at the same time. We got on the phone right after that and said that it looked pretty good. And it just kind of reinforced to confirm some of the things our doctors had mentioned to us. It was important and it was good to see, end quote. That nine minutes is just very different from having a two hour and a two and a half hour practice or playing the game. But I thought he looks good from where he was and initially when he got the injury to where he was at that point. Coach Flores said, that one hour workout, it took place on April 9th and it featured 55 scripted throws and another 20 throws in a dynamic drill setting at a local private gym in uh, Nashville. Flores said that the Dolphins became comfortable with Tua's medical status during those two weeks after the workout. Uh, obviously, they were comfortable enough to take him at five. Flores said, we did a lot of work and our medical staff, led by Kyle Johnson, our head trainer, and also, John Uribe did a wonderful job getting us the information that we needed. And we felt comfortable in the last couple of weeks. And he's a very talented player. So, asked what appealed to Miami about Tonga Vailoa. Coach Flores said that he's got a lot of the qualities that we're looking for in the quarterback position. He's a leader. He's accurate. He's tough. And we felt comfortable selecting him. But when Flores was asked about his plan for Tua in his rookie season, he was non-committal. He said... The plan, like all rookies, is they've just got to come in and learn. They've got to learn the, ter the terminology. They've got to get to know all the other players on the team, their fellow rookies. There's a lot that goes into that first year as a rookie, as well as obviously getting out there and playing. We try to just take it one day at a time, and you don't just go in there and be ready to go. And obviously, the best course of action for Tua is for him just to completely redshirt the 2020 season. Let him get, you know, a thousand percent healthy, 110 percent healthy. Let him learn the playbook. Let him learn everything from Fitzpatrick. And what better a mentor for Tua than Fitzmagic, man. They're, they're pretty similar players. They've got a pretty similar skill set. But Tua, obviously, is much more gifted athletically. But, you know, I just can't wait to see what he's going to look like in his second season. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go. And the Tua train is going to be off and rolling, baby. Man, cannot wait to see Tua leading this offense. Especially with the weapons we've got. Preston Williams, Devante Parker, Matt Breida. Whatever running back we hopefully draft in 2021, hope, who knows, we might even move forward with Matt Breida and Jordan Howard, but we've got a number of weapons for Tua, and I can't wait to see how he's going to thrive in this offense, and especially with uh, Chan Gailey now as offensive coordinator, I think he's definitely going to help him transition into uh, an NFL quarterback. So transitioning away from Tua here, I've got some nice little Austin Jackson uh, tidbits that have come out. And a few nuggets on how the Dolphins view Austin Jackson moving forward. So when evaluators and draft analysts talk about Dolphins draft pick Austin Jackson, there's a common theme. The former USC left tackle is very talented and he's got a high ceiling, obviously, but he might not necessarily be ready to start initially as a rookie. The Dolphins don't believe that to be the case at all. According to a source with direct knowledge on the situation, the Dolphins don't view Jackson as a project that needs to sit on the beach his whole rookie year and get stronger and learn. They believe he's talented enough now to be the starting left tackle this season, provided he earns a job in training camp and isn't overwhelmed in August practices and the preseason, while also getting a good grip on the playbook, obviously. And after watching his post-draft uh, interviews, Austin Jackson just looks like a solid young man. You can just tell he's intelligent and he's got tremendous character. Just put it this way, if Jackson isn't the starting left tackle at some point early in the season or by the beginning of the season, some internally in the Dolphins organization are going to be pretty disappointed, especially after taking Jackson at pick 18 overall in the first round. And it really was a surprise. I thought we were probably going to go with either, you know, an elite um, defensive prospect or a different tackle at 18, but obviously they got the confidence in Jackson that he can be our franchise left tackle. 
And just put it this way, if Jackson isn't a starting left tackle at some point early in the season or by the beginning of the season, I'm sure that many in the Dolphins organization are going to be pretty disappointed. Uh, hopefully he can be what they think he is. And I'm sure that a lot of us Dolphins fans are going to be you know, feeling some type of way about Austin Jackson if he doesn't produce. The Dolphins did love his film and so did I. I just love the way how fluidly he moves on the field and that elite athleticism at tackle just jumps off the screen. But... They are confident in Jackson, even though he struggled against Iowa's AJ Epinesa. As I've said in pre previous videos, that's the, one of the biggest knocks on Jackson, that he isn't strong enough and that he was dominated by Epinesa. But I think that Epinesa is a first-round pick, and I really feel like uh, Austin Jackson wasn't at his best this previous 2019 season after donating bone marrow to his sister, man. It's just, it took him a long time to recover from that, and I'm sure he wasn't at his best at all. The Dolphins... Love his character, uh, they love his talent, and we're all just hoping that he develops into a franchise left tackle, hopefully sooner rather than later. According to PFF, he only allowed 11 quarterback hits on 1,152 pass blocking snaps in his career. That is just tremendous blocking efficiency at his time uh, at USC, but hopefully he can carry over that kind of uh, production to the Dolphins. The Dolphins obviously are never going to say they expect any rookie to come in and start, but privately... That is the hope, even though every draft analyst has said that he's going to need some time. PFF said that Jackson is going to be a project for Miami, both technically and physically. His play strength was not that of a first-round pick, and I do agree with that at times, but his pass-blocking efficiency definitely reflects the, the numbers of a elite tackle. And just watching his tape, you can just tell that he's got the play of a um, you know franchise tackle. ESPN's Mal Kuyper said during the draft that He's going to need some time, and Daniel Jeremiah from the NFL Network said that, I don't know that he can step on the field right away and be an impact tackle, but the upside with this kid is off the charts because of his ability to bend his knees and move, and that's exactly what I see on tape, and that's exactly what the Dolphins have seen. One factor working in Austin Jackson's favor is obviously the lack of solid depth at the left tackle position. One Dolphins official told associates before the draft that the Dolphins don't want to go into the season with Julian Davenport as our starting left tackle. And obviously that's the case. God, he is horrible. Listen to these numbers. Last season, PFF rated Davenport 69th out of 82 qualifying tackles. Despite playing in only eight games, he allowed six sacks and 32 quarterback pressures. He is terrible. I've got no idea what the Dolphins see in him. And PFF rated him 120th out of 120 offensive tackles in run blocking, man. He is just horrible. He's got great size, 6'7", 320 pounds, but he is just shit. I've got no idea what the Dolphins see in him. He is just absolutely horrible, and I just hope that Dolphins cut him. He's just absolutely shit house. Uh, PFF said he allowed 12 sacks in 15 games for Houston in 2018 before he was traded to Miami last August in the Larry Tunsil trade. And obviously, man, that was just a, a garbage piece for you know the trade to go through. So in his last 23 games, Julian Davenport has allowed 18 sacks, though he, he did show improvement in December, I've got to admit, but I just, you know, if a guy is that crap, just why put in the resources for him to, to develop? Even a raw Austin Jackson at this point is going to be a much better alternative to Davenport if Jackson holds up in camp, and hopefully he should. Now on to some news on Robert Hunt. Uh, though some evaluators see Robert Hunt as a guard, the Dolphins internally have been saying that they at least want to give him a chance at right tackle. And the plan, subject to change obviously, is going to allow Hunt and Jesse Davis to compete at right tackle and decide which player is best suited at tackle and which player is better suited at guard. That is the thinking as of now and we'll see if that changes by late July. And that's exactly what I said on my day two recap of the draft. Uh, Jesse Davis and Hunt are going to compete for you know the right tackle and right guard spots but... Whoever fits best in those positions is going to start there, so I'm not really fussed who starts where. Hunt, who was selected by the Dolphins at 39th overall, has more experience at right tackle than right guard. And honestly, I think that Hunt should get the first chance at right tackle. Having that kind of size and athleticism and thump at right tackle would just be perfect for this running game and, you know, just protecting the quarterback on the right side. Hunt moved to right tackle for all 18 games in 2018, and Sunbelt coaches considered his play good enough to vote him second team all-conference. He missed time last season with a groin injury. I think he only played in like two, three, four games, something like that. But 
Even after playing in limited games in 2019, he was still named to the first team All-SBC for his play at right tackle in that conference. According to NFL.com's Lance Zerline, he said that Hunt has the necessary talent to become a future starter at right tackle, but PFF's Mike Renner said that he's got the size and power to be a future Pro Bowl guard. So, obviously the consensus out there is that he's a versatile lineman and, yeah, just got to wait for training camp and preseason to see where Hunt fits best on this offensive line. But I just can't wait to see him play, man, because he's just he's so athletic for his size and he's just such a beast. Oh, we haven't had a right tackle like this for, man, forever. And lastly here, the Dolphins' virtual offseason got underway on Monday. The Dolphins got together with their players, except for the rookies, for the first time this offseason at 1 p.m., on Monday. The off-season sessions conducted through video conferencing obviously will include classroom work and reportedly a physical component. So I mean, what are they going to do? Like workouts in their living room or in the backyard? Like, oh man, this whole pandemic has just thrown a huge wrench into the Dolphins' plans. It's just a huge shame. The rookies will participate in the meetings beginning May 11th. 20 teams began those off-season sessions on Monday and NFL teams aren't permitted to hold any off-season programs at their facilities because of the pandemic, obviously. Coach Flores said that the coaches conducted a run-through last week. He said, We've worked extremely hard since they closed the facilities to find a way to teach the players through this technology and just install the basic information. What we're going to install in the next three weeks, he said. Our coaches are just ready to go. He also said, we had a full run through last week here with full squad meetings where we went special teams, then we went to the offense and then the defense. Then we went to position meetings. We had our practice run and we got all the kinks out and we're ready to go. Flores also said the most important thing for us is to do a good job in the virtual meetings and just lay a foundation with basic information, terminology, basic fundamentals, and technique, and just try to get better with the circumstances that we have now. That's all we can do. So hopefully the team can take this time to come back as best they can. Hopefully, you know, all the new players, the new free agents and rookies can get best acquainted with both sides of the ball, and hopefully they can come together as a team and be a cohesive unit virtually. (laughs) Man, oh, this sucks. But if there is one head coach out there that can get it done, it's Coach Flores. He's the man for the job. I'm just a huge fan. And I'm confident that he and his staff can, you know, get the players ready. So that's it for this video, guys. Just some information on, you know, Brian Flores and the team's thinking on tour. How they feel about, you know, Austin Jackson and Robert Hunt on the offensive line. And how they think they're going to perform moving forward. Uh, Don't forget to leave some feedback in the comments section. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, if you've been enjoying the content. And as always, it's fins up, baby. I'll see you guys in the next one. All aboard the tour train.